What's up guys, today we're in Texas. We're hunting turkeys, we're hunting hogs. It is action packed. You are not gonna wanna miss it. There's some stuff that happens really fast. There's some really graphic stuff. Stick around, check it out. My name is Matt and I live for moments like these. Guys, I killed the biggest buck of my life this morning. I'm far from an expert, but using persistence and a little bit of luck, I'm able to make some pretty cool things happen. I do my best to capture the entire harvest, the kill, the prep, and my favorite part, the meal. Because to me, it's more than a hunt. It's man versus deer. He is a mass monster, holy cow. What is up guys and welcome back to another Man vs. Deer video. If you're new to the channel, really appreciate you guys taking the time to check out a Man vs. Deer video. And if you're into hunting videos and the style of Catch, Clean, Cook, make sure you smack that subscribe button and turn on that notifications bell. You are gonna like the content you find on this channel. So tonight is the night before I leave for a Texas Rio hunt. I'm super excited. Plan is to drive down to Texas, smack a Rio gobbler right in its beak, and hopefully we're gonna knock down a few hogs uh, during that process. I got a buddy coming with me. His name is Jesse, and this is gonna be a super awesome hunt. As always, if we kill, we're gonna cook and clean, and it's gonna be a super fun video. Before I get the truck packed, uh, I do wanna say thank you to three companies that really uh, help support the channel and, and made this video possible. So the companies that are sponsoring today's video are Twisted Iron Hunting, you got Buck Wipes, and then we got 2A Firearms, which is a local company in the southwestern Missouri area. If you guys can support these companies, and if you keep watching this video, you'll see more information about their products and how I use them in the field. But for now, I've got to get this truck packed. I've got a really unique way that I pack it. So stick around and I'll give you the tour of the truck once I get it packed. So here is how I pack my truck for most DIY or DIY plus a buddy trips. I'm gonna flip you around. This is my Nolan cooler. This is the cooler that I use for hauling game. It's pretty good size. It's a 77 quart. Call it my Nolan cooler because my youngest son when he was tiny wrote his name on it and did a pretty good job. So that's my Nolan cooler. I got my bow right here. Planning on hunting hogs with that. And then I got my turkey decoys. So all this is gonna go in the truck and then I'll close the uh, bed cover on it. And that's everything that's in the back. This is where it gets pretty unique and pretty cool. So what I've got here under the seats is I've got my shotgun and my 30-30. Uh, shotguns for turkey, 30-30s just in case I want to spot and stalk some hogs. This is my camera gear and there's a cooler right over there. That cooler has all my camp items in it. So propane burner, pots, pans, silverware, toothbrush, tooth toothpaste, seasonings, anything I would use to cook it's all in there extra batteries things like that that's just my box for you know extra stuff this is where it gets neat this is actually an air mattress and i'll pull this tetrad bag out of here because the tetrad bag it's supposed to rain tonight and i didn't want this in the back even though it's waterproof but this is an air mattress made specifically for a truck with a sleeping bag i've got that cooler propped up underneath it to stop the air mattress from going this way so you'd put your head down at that end and I can actually drive a long, long ways, sleep in the truck at a gas station, or if I'm hunting National Forest and I find a spot that I want to camp out for the night at, I can sleep in my truck instead of having to bring a tent. But that is everything that I'm bringing to Texas. That's my weapons, that's my hunting gear, that's my decoys, that's my turkey vest, my hats, even stuff to cook food over a campfire. I've got it all in there, and one of us can sleep while the other person drives, or if you're camping by yourself, you can sleep in here as opposed to having to do a tent. But that's how I pack my truck for these long trips. The Tetrad bag is gonna go in there until we leave tomorrow, at which point it will rotate to the back. And uh, I will see you guys on the road tomorrow. I'm excited. What's up, Jesse? We are in Texas, just crossed over. It's nine in the morning, and uh, we're getting pretty close to where we're supposed to be. Not gonna be much action around here until tonight. Uh, plan is to get to camp, get set up, uh, meet everybody, and then uh, we're gonna hog hunt tonight. We should be chasing turkeys tomorrow, but I'll update you guys when we get to camp. Got Jesse with me, trying to take some video of him. when We picked him up last night, but it was dark and rainy, so we couldn't do that. But we're almost there. We're jacked. We're in Texas. Near the turkey's goblin now.
stage hunting shows. So guys, we're all set up in our blind. We're excited. I've never hog hunted in Texas. I've never done any hunting in Texas. And the scenery out here is, is neat. All the trees are smaller than I'm used to. It's a lot of red dirt and uh, just super, super cool scenery. Um, Jesse's here with me. He's going to shoot first. Um, he's never hunted out of Missouri before, so I want to make sure he gets he gets his hunting in. And then if anything comes back to the feeder afterwards, um, I'm going to try to take a shot with my bow. He's rifle hunting. I'm bow hunting. So um, shouldn't take long for us to see. I mean, these things are trained for the feeder, you know. Um, they're, they're allowed to do that in Texas, so we are hunting over a feeder, and uh, hopefully we get some action soon. It's the one black ram in the back. Yeah. It's been a pain in the butt the whole time. They're working their way out. Shit. Nah, not the one in the back. And dude, if they if some of them do disperse, that's fine. So Mine too, I can't hear anything. I don't think they're gonna go far. Good job, bro. Let's go the stuff, can you? He will. If he was gonna get up, he'd have gone up there tough, bro. I was aiming right behind the ear, but he was quartered away. So I may have gone through the eye or something. The penetration was. It, went, it went all the way through. Oh, it did? Okay. I hit it a little far back, though, to be honest. You see? Back there. Or, I mean, yeah. Oh, sorry, right there. It went all the way through for sure. It was still sticking in her, but it went through both sides. Yeah. We'll give her a minute and then we'll go look. Yeah, she went straight. Last, last I saw her was right back over there. Jesse, how long were we sitting down? <laughs> 30 minutes max. I don't even think that, bro. I hadn't even... Oh, until it. they showed up? Yeah. Like, pretty much as soon as you turned off the camera. Yeah. So we, we both shot a hog. He, he shot one, and his dropped right there. I shot one, and I seen the arrow go through. It was a quartering shot, you know? And, and they, they're constantly moving because they're eating. 
Oh, but it looked like a good shot, and it, I think I see it fall over and start kicking. We won't know until we go look for it, but uh, we both have shot a hollow, me with the bow, him with the rifle, and uh, like he said, it wasn't very long at all before pigs started showing up. And, He's got a really decent size hog. Mine isn't too far behind his, but they're not huge. I think they're going to make some really good eating yeah, hogs. And so, um, pretty excited. We'll probably give them just a minute and uh, and then go get them. But well, it didn't take us long to get curious, and we just had to go lay eyes on Jesse's hog. It was awesome to see his excitement. We also poked around to see if we could find any sign of my hog besides some hair at the impact site. Uh, we didn't really see much, so we decided to wait it out. We found where my arrow came out of the hog, and it does have a little bit of gut matter in it, which I knew because it was quartering away really hard. Reviewed the footage, and it does look like a good shot. Um, but with how far, it, I think it might have ran. Um, we're gonna we're gonna stay here till dark, and then proceed after that, and uh, see if we can't find it. And in the meantime, we're gonna sit here. And I've got one more hog I can kill, so if another one that's uh, decently sized comes in may have a second opportunity, so we'll just have to see what happens. So to say the Sand Fork Ranch had a lot of hogs would be an understatement of this century. We had hogs in front of us the entire night, and it was really awesome to get to watch these little guys while we were waiting for some of the bigger ones to show up. We did hear some grunting and heavy footsteps in the background, and it didn't take us long to see what was making all the commotion. that again. I don't think he was moving that much. I think I just pulled it slightly. I was trying to hug that shoulder like uh, like that guy was telling us earlier. I maybe hugged it too much. I don't know. That's a good hug, man. That second shot went right where I wanted it, but that first shot, man. So we should have been a little bit back. Right. Brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> I was sticking my head out and the wind was blowing him. <laughs> I kind of wanted to wait to do the spot the stock, but he came out and he was pretty cool looking pig. I think it's a boar he was like, right? Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Oh, he's heavy. Sheesh. You help. <laughs> Grab a leg. Yeah. Sure is that heavy? Yeah. Ish. Nice work, man. Pretty fun. Wish I'd have put a better shot on on him, but it's all right. He's down, and the second shot went where I want. The first one, we don't know. We can't find. Can't really find any blood to track him. I mean, it looked like a really good shot on video. 
Um, we're not supposed to go, there's other hunters out here, so we're not supposed to go terribly far from our blind. And so when we, uh, when we meet up with Bryce later, he's got like a thermal imaging thing. I think he'll look and see if we can't pick up on any blood, but we may find that one too. Who knows? Yeah. Once we got back to camp, it was time to clean some hogs. Like most of my big game, uh, what we did was utilize the gutless method, where we basically peeled the skin down, quartered the animal, took out the back straps, took out the inner loins, we cut some meat off the ribs, and Bryce actually had a really nice walk-in cooler for us to store our game in while we hunted over the next couple days. It was a really special night, everyone was actually able to connect with a hog, and a couple of the guys got some really, really big ones. Um, what was really, really special about this night was watching Bryce get to work. Uh, he actually cleaned and quartered three hogs in the time it took me to do one, which is very humbling, and I learned a lot watching him go to work. You're fine. <laughs> no. I know you're a YouTube thing, sorry. No, I do, I do a million things. As long as you don't mind being like in the background. No, I don't want to hear it. All right guys, morning number two at Sand Fork. Last night was full of action. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to recover my first hog, but was able to place a pretty good shot on my second one. First ever hog with a bow, was pretty excited about that. Jesse knocked down his first hog ever, and uh, we got him skin quartered and in the cooler, and we're gonna be cooking something pretty amazing with him tonight. Today is all about turkeys, and uh, the guy, Lowell's gonna be taking us to a pretty cool spot. And Lowell, is, he's like one of them grizzled old, you know, I killed 500 turkeys type of turkey hunter, so I'm curious to see what I can learn off of him. But he's got a spot he's gonna take us to where uh, he's got a cell camera at and he's just been getting pictures of turkeys on it right and left. Uh, they've had some hunters out there this year already that have harvested some birds. So good bird numbers, high odds hunt, hopefully. Uh, we're gonna go out there, set some decoys out and see if we can't call one in. But I'm gonna finish getting uh, set up and we'll see you guys on the road. Double hoodie and up today because it's way freaking colder than Texas should be. <laughs> It is. This is what I keep walking when I'm bringing this. I'm just going to set up the truck. So I'll do decide if I want to wear it later. So we've been getting trail camera pictures of birds, or Lowell has been getting trail camera pictures of birds at this little spot up here next to a wheat field, but we've got a bird roosted right there. You can hear him. We got a bird roosted right off a logging road that works into these wheat fields. We think he's gonna come right up this road. So I think we're gonna set up on him. He's gobbling like crazy. You shut a truck door, a bird tweets like anything you do, he's gobbling at. So we're gonna set up on that bird. And uh, man, he's, it's like five since I started the video, but we're, we're gonna set up on him. He's hot. Is that a second one? There's two, maybe. Let's get set up. That right up. He felt popped.
<laughs> Dude, that's like 10 steps. <coughs> Jake, it looked like it was go it was gobbling and strutting. It looked like a tom to me. You seen him come all the way? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I had limited vision from where I was, but I'd have swore that was That's a tom. Nice, man. <laughs> it's old. I would have swore that was a tom. Could you see any different? I didn't see until I got right here. Yeah. All I could see was his head. So. Yeah, I never saw his beard. But I wonder. I wonder, being he was gobbling so much, but what? What did Jake? But. No, he was gobbling his head off, wasn't he? Won't do it no more. No, that's a big bird anyways. Yeah, that's that's how, that's how they grow jakes down here then. I don't know if he's a jake or a small top. I mean, his beard isn't pretty big, but he was in full strut and had a full fan. So. Yeah, his fan was huge. If he is, he got me and I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get these shells out of this. Seven oh eight, seven oh seven. That's how it's done. Congratulations! Anyway. You got some good video. Yeah, or? yeah. I, I think I had that framed perfectly right when you pulled. So could you, could you watch him come through down the road? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had, I had the camera on him back here. I seen him come through this gap. I mean, it was dark. I mean, I could just barely see him. I mm -hmm. should have brought my binoculars, but. Uh, then the next time I see him, I see his head right in here. Yeah, Jesse told me, he goes, it sounds like it's he's getting closer. I, yeah, said, I said, he's moving. I, said, I knew, because he, he went from right there to right there, and I knew that fucker down, he's on the road. I thought it was maybe a different bird, because it yeah it seemed too dark for them to have flown down, but they definitely, like in, hot. Yeah, in Missouri, they definitely don't fly down there. That thing, that's, a, that's a big bird. Yeah. That's not a small bird he's at all. Yeah. For, for Jake. Beautiful tail fan. Yeah, there we go. They're like a Merriam's turkey, really. Let me get a... Got a little beard on him. Let me get a pick. That's probably like a four or five inch beard. It's not too bad. So I'm shooting long beard XRs, number fours out of a Jeb's choke. And look at what it did to this guy. <laughs> his beak is all busted to heck. It about took his head off. That is about as good of a shot as you can put on one. First morning of the turkey hunt, we got a Rio down. I would have bet you a million dollars that that was a long beard. He came in gobbling at full strut, spitting, drumming, the whole works. We had a lot of this brush in the way, so I couldn't really see a beard, but he did all the stuff that you want a big old gobbler to do. So I don't care. All you Jake snobs, shove it. I don't care. But this, this is our guy right here. Um, I'll show you where we were sitting. So we shot this bird. <laughs> Well, here's the blood splatter. Right here. We shot him right here, and it's probably 20 steps to our tree. We were tucked in. I was sitting here, and Jesse was sitting here. That bird worked along this logging road, and I could have shot him a little bit before, but it, it would have been a longer shot, you know? And he was still working in it full strut, so. Once he cleared these little cactuses right here. Once his head cleared these little cactuses here and it wasn't by much, um, I let him have it. I don't wait for the show. I don't do that. Like when I get a chance to kill one, I kill one. But that turkey, he was roosted somewhere over here earlier this morning and just gobbling like crazy. The whole time I'm shooting any kind of video, he's gobbling, 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 gobbling. And so instead of hunting the edge of this wheat field up here, we... We thought we'd have uh, better luck calling him down this two track, which obviously paid off, right? And we, we start calling to that bird. It gets light enough out, we start calling to him. And uh, we hear one gobble over here. Jesse thought it was the same bird getting closer. Turns out he was right. I thought it was a different bird because they don't fly down when it's that dark in Missouri. They just 
they don't, you know, that bird was on the ground before a Missouri bird would have ever thought about it. But he was definitely on the ground and he, we heard it get closer and closer. And then we could see a good bit too, heard him spitting and drumming the whole way up. And I don't know if there was any other birds gobbling or not. I don't care. That was a, that was a really sweet hunt. Probably the fastest turkey hunt I've ever had. I mean, it was, what time was it when we killed him, Lowell? 707. 707. <clears throat> Sun was barely up. I don't even think the GoPro had light enough. I had it pointed on me. I don't think it, it was even light enough yet for it to pick up me and the camera. That's how early it was. That is the earliest, fastest turkey hunt I've ever had. The scenery out here has been amazing. The hog hunt last night was amazing. Now we get to go back to camp and cook some stuff. Let's do it. Yeah. Is it on? Mm -hmm. Hope this ride's back here. <laughs> huh? I hope this ride's back here. Where'd you put it? Being that this was my first Rio, I removed the tail fan and the beard first because I didn't want them to get damaged while I was moving the bird around and cleaning it. Very special memory to me and I wanted to make sure that I preserved it. Next I went to work removing the breast from this turkey. And if you've never done that before, it's a very simple process. You just make an incision in the skin, expose that breastbone by pulling it back and you're gonna carve these breasts out of here very, very similar to removing the back strap from a deer. You're just gonna make an incision in the bone, follow it all the way down and then peel it away from the skin as you go down. Super simple process. After I get the breasts out of there, I salvage the thighs on every turkey that I shoot. They're really good for making turkey burger or doing crock pot stuff, but essentially, I just peel the skin down the leg to expose the thigh, cut the meat right off of the bone while leaving the legs on the turkey. Super simple process, and it yields quite a bit of meat, actually. Once I got that turkey taken care of, it was time to start cooking. Some of the other guys were out doing some spot and stock hunting on some hogs, and I thought it would be a neat idea to kind of whip up a couple things on the grill so that we can talk about the hunt, share a meal, and uh, just kind of enjoy the experience that was Texas hunting. So my idea for this was to take some of the hogs, separate it into muscle groups, cut it up into some pork chops, throw it on a marinade, and then grill it over some authentic Texas mesquite. And while we were at it, we're going to season and throw a turkey breast on there as well. For the turkey breast, we were able to find some Lowry seasoning salt and some pepper at the Dollar General. And very, very simple, we just made a rub and kind of seasoned both sides. It's always neat to me that when you cook in a camp setting like this, um, it's usually something super, super simple. But it ends up being some of the most delicious food you'll ever eat. And that just tells me that sometimes we tend to overcomplicate what we cook. Once the grill reached a pretty, pretty hot temperature and that flame had died down to just coals, we got to putting everything on there actually had a decent amount of meat that we were cooking and dang near ran out of space on the grill. But man, did it smell good. It only took about 15 minutes for our meat to get to temperature and uh, develop a nice crust on the outside, which is essential when you're grilling. So we pulled it off of there and brought it inside. And as luck would have it, it was right about the same time the guys were showing back up from their hunt. Wild hog gets a bad rap sometimes, and some of the other guys were nervous to try it, but everyone who tried the wild hog loved it. And of course, who doesn't enjoy a nice, moist turkey breast? Jesse and I sure did. We ate our fill. It was nice to kind of relive those hunts and just kind of soak in the enjoyment that Texas had to offer. Well guys, that's gonna do it for the turkey and the hog hunting in Texas for 2024. We were at Sand Fork Ranch, had a really, really good time. The hog hunting was amazing. The turkey hunting was amazing. The meal was epic. We made some good friends. The guys here were super awesome people and just really, really had a good time. I hope that you guys liked the video enough to subscribe more than anything. I hope that you liked the video enough to consider coming back and checking out more man versus deer content. I do a lot of catch clean cook style hunting. If you like that stuff, Make sure you check out the other videos on the channel. I want to wish you good luck next time you're in the woods, and God bless, guys. Stay safe.